skateboarding when you're skateboarding with your friends, however many years, uh, it there's you form bonds that are more like a family than it saved my life for sure. Joe didn't drink at all and we just skateboarded and did what we wanted to do and kind of left the rest of the world behind because we had our own program. What got me started in skating was a guy named Chad Sanders up the street, and it was 1987, and he gave me a really, really, really big, big piece of crap skateboard, like just like the biggest piece of crap, crap skateboard ever. And then for my eighth birthday, my mom bought me a Santa Monica Airlines Nautis uh, Panther skateboard, and so I started skating from there. But I was obviously never really any good, and it was just kind of like a little kid thing. It was like jump ramps and just more of that kind of street style kind of stuff. It was booming like up until probably about I'd say like 90, 91 and I just kind of grew up a little bit and kind of got control of my body a little bit more so we kind of started getting a little bit more serious when we were 10, 11, 12 to where you actually had some coordination to where you could move and do things and it was changing to more of a street oriented skateboarding. So we were seeing videos and it was like, okay, we can go up to the college and do this and we can we can all the way downstairs, we can kip flip downstairs, we can board slide handrails to where when I was a kid it was like people skating burnt ramps and like they were doing street style stuff but it was boneless and like uh, like street plants like inverts and stuff like that which were awesome and there were people doing awesome stuff too but it wasn't as prevalent. So just being a little kid and copying what you wanted to like copying what you saw, it was all vert style. So we didn't really start getting serious till kind of the 90s, early 90s, because the style shifted and it was like, whoa, we can do this in our town without any of these ramps or any of this stuff. With an increase of skaters and the decline of legal spots at Skate and Hayes, Jordan Romy turned his eyes to opening up a park in 1995. And it was me and my friends, and actually, like, uh, my friend's dad, Randy Schwitter, had a pretty big part of just, like, pushing because he just liked it, and it was part of his life as a kid, and he saw the value in it. So he started pushing, and he helped us do fundraisers, and he'd do fly-ins. So he'd take people for flights for, like, 10 bucks a ride, and then he'd donate all the money from the fly-ins and stuff like that. And so it was done all by donations. Our, I can say me and my friends did it, but it wasn't. It was, we did, like they wouldn't have done it. Our parents wouldn't have helped us do it, you know what I mean? Randy wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for his kids, but it was us wanting a skate park and him reacting to the need of it and basically helping. Your nails in my back now each second of life. Skaters in a park could only mean that there was a couple things left to build in Hayes America. A skate shop and a skate team. The combo of the two created White Chocolate. Um, white Chocolate kind of reached out to me and was like, hey, you want to be part of this kind of little friends and family thing uh, that we got going? You can get like a small discount on your purchases and stuff like that. But it really wasn't about the purchases, it was more about being a part of a skate shop in in Hayes, Kansas, like, that doesn't happen to anyone, so. When I was a kid, my parents took me over to uh, one of the skate demos that White Chocolate was putting on. And I remember seeing all those kids doing crazy things, and I just thought, man, that would be so neat to do that, but I bet I'll never be able to do that. And, uh, you know, two or three years later, I don't know how it came about, but I ended up getting, you know, uh, one of those, you know, a standard professional grade skateboard and uh, started skating and then uh, I saw how there was clicks and crews of these skateboarders and 
And you just, you wanted to be a part of that. And you wanted to fit in, you know? And so, it started off as just a normal thing, you know? Just the, the skate culture and, you know, trying to, trying to get your tricks down, trying to learn new things. And through time, you just start to experience different experiences. And it really starts to take take you to a place that is kind of your own world. It's, it's a great place, like a meditative place that you, sometimes learning new tricks on a skateboard helps you learn different things about yourself. After opening the doors to White Chocolate in 1998, they closed down 17 years later in June of 2015. Even though there was a buzz for skating in Hayes, when the shop closed, the crowd quickly died out leaving behind only a few skateboarders. So, I've been skating for 10 years probably now. Um, basically, lived my whole life in Hayes skateboarding uh, until probably from 10 years old all the way up until I was uh, 18. And uh, when I was 18, I moved away to Buffalo. And before I moved away, uh, skateboarding had definitely been declining in the Hayes area. And uh, I started to lose a bit of my focus on skateboarding. So I moved away to Buffalo, and they had extremely nice parks that were updated or made probably uh, two or three years before I even moved there. Uh, so they were pretty modern, nice and had good flow made really nice. It, it kind of reignited the skateboarding, uh, for me at least. Um, so I lived there almost a year and I moved back and, uh, you know, same old park, uh, two or three new obstacles in the, or five or whatever it is, new obstacles in the back. Um, they, did, they didn't really add much to uh, the whole skate park experience. you'd like to think that they'd expand the skate park. So I think maybe building a skate park would spark more interest in it, but I, I don't know what really would because I've seen it rise and fall and die out. I think it's just gotta be something in the group of friends and the one person that people see that wanna do it. There's gotta be something that sparks these people to wanna do it and it being fun isn't enough anymore. I don't know why, but I think it's partially because everyone's so attached to technology and their phones and computers and playing video games to where it, I don't mean to be one of those old dudes that say that, but like I, I'd get kicked out of the house because it's like, what are you doing? Get, do something, do something. And like, I had a Nintendo, you know what I mean? Like and I had video games, but it was like, so I think part of it's just the fact that kids are a little bit complacent. And I, I, I'd like to see people skateboard, but I'm not gonna, say that if they built a skate park that would change the scene, if there's a skate shop that would change the scene, because obviously the skate shop closed because it wasn't doing well enough. You know what I mean? So it's not the fact that we're lacking any of these things, it's a problem in the mentality of I think the world today. Um, at this point in time, the future of skateboarding in Hayes, there's a, there's a bit of a twinkle, just a nice little light that's just so it's there, but it's a little far away. I wanted to give everyone what I had back in the day. With that glimmer of hope, Michael Mater bought a high school and is redefining skating in Midwest Kansas. Well, we have to start out with the skate shop because that's, that's my priority. Also, it's the easiest business to start. So that's gonna exist on the north side of the building and it'll just be a room uh, that, you know, just your basic skate shop and it'll have everything you need. And we're gonna try and make it so that there's a, uh, we're trying to make a little indoor skate park so that people who come to, to visit for skate supplies can also get a little, a little camaraderie. The south side of the building is going to be the skating rink. And a skating rink, turning a, a half of a high school into a skating rink is a bit of a, it's a bit of an ingenuitive challenge because you have to really try and meet all your codes and standards of a standard skating rink and still at the same time not totally take away from the fact that it was a high school because a lot of people didn't want to see this high school go down in this community. 
So I still want to keep the, the school vibe atmosphere, still keep it, you know, as its original school, but at the same time use it for the kids, you know, and for basically anyone that wants to indulge in the, in the joys of skating all around. So that's what we're shooting for, and we're hoping that uh, everything works out, and we're hoping that, uh, well, we're not really hoping. We know people will come because people are looking for an outlet. Skateboarding just has so many potentials to affect your, your life down the road that you really just don't see in the, in the here and now. But I can tell you from where I'm at and how much I've skated in my life, it's changed my world and it's made me such a better person.